and ask yourself, what is it that I want? What is it that I want? So let's take money for example. Uh, it's easy to say, I want a million dollars, or I want a thousand dollars, or I want ten thousand dollars, or I want more money. Let's just start with that. I want more money. Well, how much more money do you want? Then you have to ask yourself, when you get that money, what are you going to do with it? Welcome to this fourth episode on magic. <clears throat> and I want to talk to you about uh, the importance of preparation in doing these things. In my last episode, I talked about the three essential components to magic, and those three being desire, will, and belief. <clears throat> you can think about it like a three-legged stool. If you don't have all three legs, the stool isn't going to be stabilized. So without fully developing and exercising desire, uh, will, or intention, and belief, your stool is going to be unstable. You're not going to be able to stabilize the change that you want within yourself or within the natural world. So preparation is important in every endeavor of life, right? If you're going to play a sport, then you have to practice. You have to practice individually and you have to practice with the team. You don't just show up at the game without any preparation, without any knowing about what you're going to do, without any strategy, and expect to be successful. So in the same way, when you're doing magic, or if you choose to call it faith, or if you choose to call it using the, the law of attraction, makes no difference to me. To me, it's all talking about the same thing. <clears throat> I'm using the term magic uh, because I'm using it to uh, describe a process that we use to bring about change within ourselves and within our circumstances and our lives. Lasting change, beneficial change. And so preparation, as I said, is key. Now, the first part of preparation is to know exactly what it is that you want, exactly what it is that you desire. And this can be a little bit more complicated uh, than people realize, and it's definitely more important than some people realize. I remember back when I was getting into the Bible and getting into faith, the first book I read on faith was Charles Capp's book, Releasing the Ability of God Through Prayer. And in that book, he talked about the importance of knowing what it was that you wanted and also the importance of seeking the will of God before you decide to make a change in your life. He tells a story. I don't know if it's true or not, but the story is in the book and it illustrates the point. He tells a story about a man who was in a concentration camp in Germany during World War II, and he wanted out. This was a particularly nasty camp, and he wanted out of this camp. So he was using his faith to and prayer to uh, change his situation, to get him moved from one camp to a camp that was a little bit easier. And sure enough, his belief, his desire, his will worked, and he created the change that he wanted. He got transferred to the easier camp, and so he was celebrating the fact that what he had done had worked and he had created the change for him that he wanted. The next day, the camp that he had left was liberated by the um, <clears throat> opposing forces. The armies came in and they liberated that camp and all the people in that camp were set completely free. It was months then in this other camp that he had got transferred to before liberation came to that camp and he got his freedom. So even though he brought about the change that he wanted, it wasn't the change that actually would have worked out for his best. He would have been better to served to stay in the situation. Uh, in her book, uh, Highways of the Mind, Dolores Ashcroft has a brilliant illustration about how important it is for us to be clear and concise on what we want. And I want to go ahead and read to you from her book. Imagine that you are walking along a deserted beach. The day is warm and sunny, and the saltiness of the sea air is making you feel really good. The tide is coming in, and as you walk along near the edge, that magical place where it is neither sea nor sand, but a little of both, a bottle is washed up at your feet. It is made of dark green glass, and there is something inside that sparkles and glitters. You look around, but there is no one but you on the beach. The bottle is closed by a silver top stopped over with wax that has been poured. In the wax, you see the faint imprint of a seal. You peer into the bottle and see something moving about inside. You shake it and there is a squeak as if something is protesting at such rough treatment. Gingerly, you pry off the seal and work the stopper out of the bottleneck. A thin plume of smoke emerges, rapidly spirals into the air, taking on human shape as it does so. Soon there stands before you one of the ancient jinn of the East. For a moment you think about running, then realize that it is very unlikely you could get away from this supernatural creature. So you stand your ground, albeit shakily, and wait for it to speak. This is your lucky day. 
It is so happy to be free after several thousand years, and it is prepared to overlook the shaking and even to reward you with the traditional three wishes. Only three, and you cannot change your mind. Once a wish has been made, and will you do it right now? Because he wants to go home to Damascus and the wife uh, and children. He, I'm sorry, he wants to get home to Damascus and the wife and children, always assuming that Jin have them. At this point, your mind would most probably go completely blank. You may think it would be easy to reel off three wishes, but is it? Health, wealth, and prosperity, I can hear someone say. True, except that as prosperity by and large means the same as wealth, you have wasted one wish. Health, certainly, but whose health? Yours? In magic, the first thing a student, a student learns is to be absolutely specific about wishes, etc. Otherwise, you can get things you would rather not have. Simply because what you asked for was not fully explained, for example, a coat, a new coat. Of what? Paint? <laughs> what color? What size? What material? So whose health are you wishing for? Just saying health could mean anyone's, even the gins. And if you say my good health, will you have any guilt feelings about not wishing for the continuing health of your children, wife, parents, or the little girl down the road with leukemia? You're already getting so confused. Wealth next? How much? Don't say as much as I need. What the djinn thinks you need and what you think you need could differ quite a bit. Remember, it has been in a bottle for thousands of years and inflation has set in. What currency? Do you want it to come as a big win with all the resultant publicity or quietly so you won't get any hassle? You still have one more wish and it is my bet that you have already got a list as long as your arm, but which one do you make? No matter what you ask for, you will wish you had asked for something else later. That is human nature. There is a rather nasty little story about the man who, having been given just one wish, thought he would be clever and wished for a thousand dollar bill under his pillow every morning for as long as he lived. He got two bills before he was knocked down by a car and killed. Or the man who wished for immortality and forgot to ask for eternal youth with it. On the whole, it is the fair sex who seem to know just how to go about getting what they want. Like the lady who, having conjured up an elemental being and being granted one wish, said simply, I wish that you would fall hopelessly in love with me and be unable to refuse me anything. Now that was a well thought out wish. Interesting story, huh? I like how it illustrates it. You see, we can think that we know what we want. And really the point of the law of attraction, the point of faith, the point of magic is for you when it comes to will and intention to be very clear about what you're willing to have, very clear on your intention, but to make sure that you're using that intention in a way that corresponds with your highest will, that corresponds with your deepest and truest self. If you're a Christian, you might say that corresponds with the Christ within you or with the will of God for your life. So uh, taking time and preparing to decide exactly what it is you want, clarifying your intention, is really, really important. So how do you go about doing this? I'll give you a practical way of doing it. Let's take a couple of different areas. Uh, what you want to do is kind of categorize or segment your life into different arenas. So for example, you might have wishes and or intentions about a relationship. You might have wishes or intentions about money. You might have wishes or intentions about a new job or health or whatever the case may be. Once you have the categories, <clears throat> then you can work a little bit more specifically and you can ask yourself, what is it that I want? What is it that I want? So let's take money for example. Uh, it's easy to say I want a million dollars or I want a thousand dollars or I want ten thousand dollars or I want more money. Let's just start with that. I want more money. Well, how much more money do you want? Then you have to ask yourself, when you get that money, what are you going to do with it? And then perhaps the most important question is, why do you want more money? Why do you want the things that that money is going to bring you? So the why is really important because it gets into your higher level values. It really gets into the level and the depths and the layers of your desires. And you want to keep... Uh, chaining up your value system by doing this. You want to say, when I get this money, what am I going to use it for? And when I get what I want to use this money for, when I buy the things that I want, what are those things going to give me that are even more important to me? Is it security? Is it freedom? Is it beauty? When you begin to answer those questions, you begin to really penetrate into the higher level uh, higher levels of yourself and begin to work things out towards your highest good 
and your best uh, good. Let's take relationships. That might be another arena. Now, where people get in trouble with relationships, specifically romantically, is they try to focus on a specific individual. They think, oh, this individual is the one I want. And if I could just have this individual, and they start focusing all of their attention, their will, their desire, their belief on one person specifically. The problem you run into there is that that person also has a will, that person also has desires, and that person also has beliefs. And so you could be creating all kinds of trappings for yourself. So when you're making a good intention, a well-formed outcome, you want to think about the things that you want, but you don't want to be so specific that you mess yourself up. If you're not specific enough, you can be so general, like the lady said in the story, asking for health. Well, whose health? Or asking for eternal life, but forgetting to ask for eternal youth to go along with it. So you want to be... Um, generally specific. And here's what I mean. If you're too specific, like in the instance of relationships, and you say, I want this specific person, uh, you're creating obstacles for yourself that you don't necessarily need to create. You can be generally specific by asking yourself, what are the qualities of this person? Or what are the qualities in a relationship? Or the person who's in the relationship, what qualities do I want them to have? So maybe you want to attract a relationship to yourself, a romantic relationship, and you say, okay, I'm going to attract a romantic relationship, and I want this person to have these qualities. I want them to be even-tempered. I want them to be fun. I want them to have a good sense of humor. Whatever it is inside you that's really, really important to you. And remember to ask the question, when I get this, what is this going to give me that's even more important? Maybe your highest value when it comes to relationships is love. I want to be able to love and to be loved. Then you want to make sure that the person that you're asking for or attracting into your life has some emotional stability as well as some emotional availability. If you attract someone into your life who's emotionally unavailable and you forget to put that on the list, then chances are your highest need for love isn't going to be met. And even though you may manifest the change that you want, it isn't going to serve you as well as you would like for it to serve you. Same thing with money. You may find out that you don't need as much money as you want in order to have the things that are going to meet your highest values. Maybe right now your highest value is just having some financial security. And so you want to build your list and build your sense of intention based on what's going to bring you the most security. And you may find out you don't need as much money. You may just need a different job that maybe even pays you less money, but it's going to leave you feeling more secure and more satisfied. For example, you might leave a job that's temporary, a temporary contract that's going to provide you with more money for a job that is more stable and long term. Uh, a teacher's job or something where you get tenure and you don't have to worry about where the next paycheck is coming from. So doing this kind of preparation, clarifying your intention, asking yourself what you want, being specific about it, but not so specific that you create obstacles for yourself and mess yourself up, and then connecting it with your why. Why do you want this? Because what this is going to do is this is going to build that three-legged stool. It's going to connect your intention, what you intend to change, what you intend to have with your desires, which is why do you want to have it? And you want to go up to your highest desires as much as possible by asking yourself, if I get this, what is this going to give me that's going to be even more important to me? So you sit down with a piece of paper, you category you categorize your life, relationships, spirituality, mystical experiences, uh, finances, social, job, whatever the case may be. And then underneath that, you ask yourself the question, what is it exactly that I want? And then you list the various different uh, qualities of the thing that you want so that you are being specific, but you're being open enough that, again, you're not being so detailed that you're narrowing it down to uh, what is going to be a really difficult thing to bring into your life. Then you want to ask yourself underneath, once you have the what I want, you have the category, then you have the what that I want that's generally specific, then you start to ask yourself, why do I want these things and connect it to your desire and connect it to your values. Once you've done all of that work, then you have what in NLP is called a well-formed outcome. Then you know why you want it. Let me just say one more thing about making change and outcome. We all have an ecology of life. We all have a certain balance. If you think about the ecological system, uh, it's symbiotic 
and it's balanced. When the ecology gets out of balance, there's a problem. Anytime that you make a change in your life, you risk uh, destabilizing. In fact, you will destabilize the ecology of your life. You may get something that you want and that's important to you, but at the same time, that change may bring something into your life that destabilizes something that you have that's even more important to you, and you may end up getting what you want, but destabilizing and losing what you have that's even more important. So again, clarifying those values and checking inside, how is this going to affect the ecology of my life? Is there any part inside of me that objects to me having this outcome? Uh, in the story that I read from Dolores Ashcroft, she talks about you know winning the lottery, having a bunch of money come in because you won the lottery. But with that is gonna come publicity. All your friends and family are gonna know about it. They're all gonna be asking you for uh, uh, money and it may destabilize your relationships. People who related to you or didn't relate to you at all are now suddenly relating to you but they're not relating to you because of who you are. You're not having authentic connection. You're having connection because they want something from you. Their greed perhaps or their need gets in the way and they start trying to use the relationship in a way that doesn't serve you. So that may disrupt the eco ecology of your family life or your social life. So thinking these things through is super important and take your time with it. Don't just jump into these things and start using them and creating change because you may end up creating change that actually brings you more bondage like the man who wished to be moved from one concentration camp to the other. Even though his life got temporarily easier, he actually created more bondage for himself because the next day the camp was liberated and his camp was not liberated for weeks and months to come. Now, of course, we can't see the future. Uh, so we can't know all the outcomes or try to control all the outcomes. The best that we can do is come to a really balanced, clear place within ourself where we say, I really want this. I know specifically what I want in a general way and I know why I want it, and I make sure it doesn't uh, upset the ecology of my life. Doing that kind of eternal work is really, really going to go a long way in guaranteeing your success when you begin to use the law of attraction or faith or magic. If you don't do those things first, then chances are you're not going to create the best outcomes for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope that you will subscribe to my channel. If you haven't, I hope you'll like and comment below. And again, wherever you are, whatever time it is for you while you're watching this, I hope you're doing great. Thank you.